Aloha. My name is Mike DeWert. I'm uh, the chief scientist for ThinkTech, and I got the privilege of having this weekly show that we're calling for the benefit of humankind because uh, I was taught when I was a kid that uh, the purpose of science is to predict and control nature for the benefit of humankind. And uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, not STEM education, but STEAM education. And I have a guest who's been involved in uh, uh, all aspects of STEM education in Hawaii. and. Uh, uh, his name is Phil Blackman and from the University of Virginia, formerly, I take it. That's right. Yeah. And a retired professor now devotes his time mostly f to educating kids. Educating kids and doing uh, quality management and various kinds of consulting for mm. efficiency. Okay. Okay. So tell me about, um, so you, you've got STEAM education as a the theme of this program. And so tell me about STEAM education. How is it different from STEM? What does it add? Well, this is sort of what it looks like when you see the you. see the picture and it says the word STEAM. It's made up of STEM, but by advocates that feel that if you add art and artistic appreciation to a program of education, it binds together the science, the technology, mm -hmm. the engineering, mm -hmm. and the math in a in a very powerfully uh, better way to communicate the various skills that are associated with STEM. So the A is for art, and it's it makes a, a more art. compelling presentation, and maybe a more clear presentation. And if we could get the science and engineering and technical stuff across more clearly, maybe we'd solve a lot of our problems more easily. Yes. It's, it's a process of thinking that the student himself often uses sketches, mm -hmm. uh, visualization, going into a dream state, and having imagination. Uh, all of these things then manifest themselves in more excitement to learning the basics of science, technology, engineering, and math. So I just uh, you just ran a contest for engineer, engineering um, posters, and um, can you tell me a little bit about that contest and how, how, what motivated you to get involved in this? And sure, the the initial initial aspect of the contest itself is it falls during engineer. National Engineers Week, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. ends uh, this weekend. <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. it, it's around the date that Bo George Washington has his birthday and okay. considered an excellent engineer mm -hmm. symbol for uh, the United States. And Abraham Lincoln was the only president to have a patent. That so, I didn't know. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, Abraham Lincoln invented a foldable boat to help the army cross rivers. He'd put it in a wagon, you'd unfold it, get in it, cross the river, fold it back up on the other side. I wish I had known that to tell my dad, who got a patent, for mm -hmm. making a nestable set of components that you could put in the trunk of your car and then slide them together and you had a boat that could be a sailboat, a rowboat, or a motorboat. That's great. Right Abraham Lincoln would have been proud. He would have been proud. And, uh, and that's, uh, so it's appropriate that we have Engineers Week around the time of Lincoln and, and Washington's birthday celebrations. For sure. So. And Thomas Jefferson, uh, also a excellent uh, engineer. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the um, I got uh, lucky to be able to mentor to a uh, Punahou eleventh grader that um, made it me aware that Punahou does not get into the state science fair, mm -hmm. science and engineering fair. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it can be fun. Let's take a look at it. Mm -hmm. he, he has a sister in a different school that does mm -hmm. get involved. Yeah. So they don't get in by choice. They get, don't get in by choice. Okay. okay. Uh, and part of it is that there's a tremendous <coughs> amount of overhead. You go from mm -hmm. September to April as a cycle to complete a process if you are trying for the top s mm -hmm. seating oh, yeah. within yeah. the state. Yeah. So it's a major commitment of resources and of uh, mentoring mm -hmm. and the teacher's time to handle the packet of uh, requirements. Yeah. Um, in the last couple of years, the state has decided under the DOE to uh, make all the rules and regulations parallel to and, and duplicating what the International Science and Engineering Fair sure. requires. Sure. Uh, that then uh, puts a lot more paperwork burden on each okay. of the teachers. And part of uh, what the student and I, uh, it was Yun Chong, discovered is that at the state level, when you get to that fair, you only find um, 
that we had three private schools in mm -hmm. involved, mm -hmm. that we only had one homeschooler, mm -hmm. and that a total of only 22 public schools involved out of the more than 133,000, I mean, 100, right, <laughs> 133 right, 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 right. high schools in so, the state. So 8,000 kids at least start the science fair every year, and you're saying That's only right. a small minority get to the exhibit down downtown Honolulu. In the, right. at the state right. uh, fair right. during April. And of those, <coughs> uh, being this engineering week, I'm emphasizing that of those, only less than 10% are categorized as engineering projects. So in the whole science fair, most of the science, there's a few that are engineering, even though it's called the International Science and Engineering Fair. Right. Okay. So that became a motivation to take a look at, um, is there a lower overhead uh, way to make it easier for teachers to raise their hands and say, I'm going to make this idea of looking into engineering and, and looking at the thought process mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and the thinking skills that engineers need that are in many ways quite distinct from what are required by a scientist. Right, 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 right. So is there really a difference between the way scientists and engineers have to think here? Uh, there is because, for example, a scientist will say, <coughs> I don't know an answer, whereas an engineer always says, I will make an answer. I will. I will take A and B and somehow fit it together to make C, okay. and I will invent whatever uh, requirements that uh, do that. Where a scientist is satisfied to saying A and B don't fit. I, I would, and, as a scientist, well, <laughs> I kind of would disagree with that a little bit. Well, but and, and I, for, yes, a, for a yes. fundamental reason right, right, under right. a given situation, and mm -hmm. the engineer must then go and say, well, right. let's right. find another way right. to try to right. combine them. Right. to make them fit. So the mm -hmm. objective is to get a practical reality. Yeah, so if the laws of physics don't permit you to do something that you want to do in engineering, you go do something parallel to accomplish a similar mission. Yes, you sometimes ask to find another set of laws. <laughs> <laughs> An alternate reality. Uh, and and uh, often uh, th that is now just um, we had Second Life, which was an alternate mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. uh, actually <coughs> training our minds to be prepared for alternatives that aren't the most obvious. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of beautiful in Second Life. You can actually change the laws of physics. Yes. And um, actually, and it uses for education, to teaching people what if gravity was 10 times stronger than it is, or what if um, uh, the uh, speed of light was different from what it is? What would your world look like? And uh, that can be a very powerful way to teach the laws of physics then. So. That it is. There, yeah. there's, there's some uh, aspects of engineering. We're just saying, uh, let's take the reality as we see it. And others that, for example, last night I was very impressed by a public broadcasting system show on the tall building that's being built in Shanghai. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they just threw away the rule book. Uh, uh, they're being able to build a building as an entire living city mm -hmm. with 15-story mm -hmm. uh, areas of trees growing mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the perimeter mm -hmm. of the building at a thousand feet elevation. So did they do this all in simulation before they started they, they, cutting metal and digging foundations? They did. They had to look at all the parameters. Of how do you make it strong? Mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. has the human aspect of why will people want to live in that kind of environment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the number of engineers that have to look at each detail down oh, yeah. to how, how do you make the and check the welds at a thousand feet and winds that can be up to 80 miles an hour oh, yeah. when you're doing the construction. So engineering, uh, and what I think is also interesting, the engineers that they interviewed and were showing you were in the age of 25. 26, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 27. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the opportunities for folks coming into engineering now are so great. Mm -hmm. And so I was quite delighted that we got uh, in the engineer poster contest, going back to, to that, right, which right, was right. this right. week. Right. We had sixth graders, <coughs> seventh graders, eighth, and ninth and tenth graders. Yeah. And they w were challenged in this engineer poster contest, which they said one parameter was how to make it easy for the teachers to say, go for it, kids. Right. So right. the very minimal paperwork. 
Uh, it was designed so that it could go to all the islands with equal facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had the cooperation of the Hawaii Foundation for Culture and Arts. They act as the recipient of the mailed-in posters. Mm -hmm. Uh, gave room there for the judges to meet when we did get the posters. Okay. And we uh, made the, the rules to have a lot of latitude. Okay. So that a teacher could tweak it one way or another if they wanted a little more of the art to be emphasized. Um, one, one teacher said that they wanted the students to go out and look at the icon that we had offered to them as Leonardo da Vinci, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. saying, um, okay, go and find some quotes from yeah. Leonardo da Vinci and try to match your inventive idea to something that he said was a good principle to keep in yeah, mind yeah, 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 when yeah. you're wanting to do good work. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Right? Yeah, so we had, a, it was good fun to, to do it in that fashion, uh, the, the extra latitude and uh, we had some nice comments uh, from some of the students. Um, I think working as an engineer is fun, and you can communicate with others to develop and make things easier to use. Hmm. So here is a uh, eighth grader that got it right. Yeah. He, he yeah. knows why we put the contest together. Um, he uh, came out and, and made an invention. We have. Uh, a, Part of this range was it, we allowed the student to just take apart something that's already existing, mm -hmm. even though mm -hmm. we used the word invention. <clears throat> yeah. and, and here's like a, a simple example of a student. I'm going to hold uh, up for yeah, so See if that shows up or not. It's the light bulb. We've all seen it, but um, now I'll talk to it again. You can see that. An incandescent that light bulb. Yeah. An incandescent light bulb, but to have the student feel comfortable that he can draw a picture of it, use the skill, mm -hmm. knows what's important by putting the labels on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That was part of the mission. Right. And uh, now, I saw a lot of the posters also the physics equations on like the resistance, inductance, uh, talking about uh, how you turn the electricity into light in this case or do some other task and uh, some of them are quite, uh, quite heavy on the, in terms of actual engineering mathematics. And so you see that that is a critical part of this uh, endeavor, that to put the mathematics in and ha have them given them an understanding of how it all works together. That's true, very, very okay. true. And, and here's a poster <coughs> that maybe all the equations aren't right. Uh, maybe some of the diagram could be adjusted. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have you hold this up for a minute. Sure. sure. It's called the. Uh, it's and, almost I, and I'm giving this a special award. Uh, called the Engineering Process of Thinking Award. And Da Vinci would say, le learning never exhausts the mind. And here on a single sheet of paper, uh, the student brought together the tools of STEM, mm -hmm. and he comprised it uh, and, and used art to try to figure an arrangement. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that the, and, he, and he made reference to work of others, which right. is another characteristic right. of an engineer. Right. We don't do things in, in, in and he related the qualities of STEM, which aspects of STEM help mm -hmm. make him successful in designing this invention, which is uh, understanding the nature of a robot that uses paddle to move through the water. So fluid dynamics you know, as well as robotics combined here. That's right. And then trying to convey via the equations a lot of the concepts of fluid dynamics and force and action and reaction. Yes. Okay. And, and we see in this diagram, again, uh, that we have a, uh, we had one diagram that showed forces. We mm -hmm. had another that showed how to take the raw data of mm -hmm. an analysis mm -hmm. and make a graph mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. These were some of the tools that were suggested uh, in the contest design mm -hmm. that they employ within the uh, poster. On that note, we need to take a break. Okay. This, this is Think Tech. My name is Mike DeWert. This is for the benefit of humankind, and I'm talking to Phil Blackman about STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And we'll be back shortly. Castle and Cook, Hawaii. Investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Collateral analytics. Empowering the real estate industry to make better informed property investment decisions. The foreign trade zone. 
bringing the benefits of the foreign trade zone programs to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. Galen Ho, a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, incorporating diverse perspectives to design a flexible and forward-looking energy strategy. Hawaii Energy, the state's energy and efficiency program created to help Hawaii's residents and businesses adopt a clean energy lifestyle. Hawaii Gas, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Hawaii Pacific Health, bringing technology and teamwork together to transform healthcare in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, attached to DBED, is the state's leading technology agency. The Scheidler Family Foundation, supporting educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Aloha, welcome back. I'm Mike DeWert. This is Think Tech, and this show is for the benefit of humankind. I'm uh, talking today with Phil Blackman, who's an educator, uh, uh, predominantly engineer, and he's uh, here to t tell us about STEAM education and the uh, recent poster contest he did for Engineers Week, uh, trying to involve more kids in how to communicate uh, technical information. So, uh, Phil, tell me more about this, uh, this contest. Yeah, we, we, were, we got hundreds of uh, <coughs> examples of students getting the freedom to take an idea with very small constraints mm -hmm. and putting it onto a poster and submitting it for evaluation. Now, typically in a contest, you try to say who gets first, second, third, and fourth. But I've done an experiment here where I'm, I'm just choosing to indicate the judge's thoughts on what gives this particular yeah. poster quality, right. not just give a ranking. And that's a suggestion that I'm proposing that the science fairs and the Olympiad for, uh, ha have a little more of that strength of feedback to the student. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because there is not a cookie cutter uh, design for an engineer. Okay. And the talents that have to be brought together is that we need to nourish what is presented to us mm -hmm. and uh, get the best advantage out of that. Yeah. And here, for example, is uh, a poster that accomplished most of the elements that we were looking for, not in a new invention, but dissecting, oh, dissecting a, a guitar. Yeah. And this is sort of the style that Leonardo da Vinci would use when he took a, a body of a human body and took the arms and the legs and the pieces apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. gave him an insight. Yeah. And so I've given that uh, an award here was the Careful Observation Award. Okay. Taking something and breaking it into uh, those components that then let you say, well, why does it work so well when it's put together? Mm, mm -hmm, what, mm -hmm. what are the essential ingredients? What are the ingredients that maybe we can make a tweak to and get something even more interesting out of? And this uh, student was quite uh, capable of saying, I think that working on this project has taught me more about how STEM can relate to the real world. I think that working as an engineer would be a good experience because I could learn more about creating and fixing products. Mm -hmm. Now that's why he's yeah. getting this award because he got yeah. it straight on. He, he really yeah. understands the value yeah. of getting an integrated right. education. And this is a real guitar, not Guitar Hero, which needs to teach you how to play a real guitar, let alone understand one. That's right. So this, is a, this is quite a beautiful piece of work. And uh, so. So with, with, when you say careful observation award, now that's of course a fundamental principle of science as well, is observing the, the natural world, observing what's going on, and then trying to infer relationships and how things are really working. And, uh, oh, I don't want to go to where my brother and I growing up, he was in the science, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was in the engineering, and we clearly understood that there was some distinction. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. And he always said the scientist was better than <laughs> the engineer. Just I, I see the distinction some, getting more blurred as time goes oh, on. Um, and that's what I'll say. We, we work together. Yes, yes. As we are in the we conversation have to, here. We have to, yeah. 
and, and there are projects that engineers tackle that they say we don't have the kind of material that can do what we're designing, right. but we're depending on engineer, uh, scientists to discover it when we get to that stage of the project. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. uh, Dreamliner that <coughs> Boeing put together had many aspects of oh, that yeah. sort that they, they said we will get it right on how to work with carbon fiber. Right. right. Um, we will get it right on how to decide on the decomposition of some of these materials after 40 years. Mm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It turns out that uh, the constraints on doing great engineering projects now don't just come from the boss, they come from the whole climate of a global economy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A, a lot mm -hmm. of the design aspects of the Dreamliner, for example, were uh, generated by the laws and regulations, surprising, of China. Mm. And they said, if we buy these airplanes in 40 years, what happens when we try to dispose of them? Do mm -hmm. we have toxic materials? Do we have uh, a, a way to segregate the different parts? Mm -hmm. And that became part of the blueprint by which Boeing uh, projected their planes, not will they get off the ground and fly, but how will they be buried so many years in the future? Right, so, so that's a very important thing with our increasingly trash-filled world, the garbage patch in the Pacific, mm -hmm. and our landfills filling up. How do we design things that you can dispose of them in an ecologically sensitive manner, you know, when they're done? So, for example, solar panels, there's cadmium, arsenic, stuff in it. We don't yet have a strategy for disposing of them 25 years from now, when yeah. the end of their life. So those kinds of things we do have to deal with. So it's good to hear that, you know, Boeing had to do that and did that. Yes, and it's part of the training of engineers now at, uh, at, at the college level. They take a uh, stewardship aspect to the course material. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Worcester Polytechnic Institute, where I did my undergraduate study, is quite keen in that. Turns out also that uh, Dean Choi of the College of Engineering. Oh, yeah, also, Son Choi. Yeah. Son Choi, he also uh, graduated his undergraduate work at Worcester Polytechnic okay. Institute. Uh, and Worcester is uh, Polytechnic Institute, WPI, is uh, giving some uh, awards to the teachers of the students in mm -hmm. this engineering poster contest that will give oh, them excellent. some of the raw material that uh, is circulated among the alumni and among the students, mm -hmm. uh, giving them an insight to what their partners in one other department are doing so mm -hmm. that they, they get a full sense of STEM at the college level. So right, give them an early that. start on this integrated way of looking at things, you yes. know, put it all together. Worcester, Worcester was the first uh, undergraduate college in the nation to establish a degree granting program in robotics. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah. And robotics, I thought it was MIT. No. Wow. Little Worcester. Okay. Worcester. And I, I'm appreciating the fact that I think I had an influence on that speed and, and timing yeah. uh, by uh, advocating with the president, they have a, a group they call the uh, mm -hmm. President's Circle, and uh, he gave me the latitude to go to every department head and pitch the idea of uh, getting to a, not just supporting FIRST Robotics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but to, uh, in the high school level, yeah. but to become competitive on an industrial level and in a intercollegiate level. So what is FIRST Robotics not doing that you saw a gap in? I mean, as we might explain what FIRST Robotics is. FIRST Robotics, I think, is one of six robotics-based programs mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. set of programs to teach uh, the, the many techniques and attributes that you have to put to make a good robot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the, my, my lab partner at MIT was one of the co-authors of the FIRST Robotics program throughout the country. So I, I am familiar with its total advantages, and I'm mm -hmm. also yeah. familiar with uh, the history of, of his thought process yes. that brought that into place. Yeah, that's a, several very good, brilliant teams here in Hawaii from various uh, schools uh, entering the contest. Absolutely. So. Uh, I think that the robotics program and the Friends of Robotics, uh, they cultivate interest from 8,000 <coughs> students across the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's as big as a science fair. Yeah, lead a little bigger. 
Maybe. Little, I think 7,000, well, in terms of students, it's mm -hmm. very comparable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're both uh, have their own set of ancillary um, nonprofits, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. parents that make that possible. Yeah. It's yeah. clearly not a attribute of uh, something that you could go into the telephone directory right. and look up the Department of Education and say, oh, this is, yeah. this is how it's run, right. this is what right. makes it happen. Right. It's being done by a lot of volunteers yep. and a lot of nonprofits. Yeah, what impresses me about the first teams is the amount of teamwork they have to do. Because one kid may be the guy that designs the uh, mechanical engineering, and another one may be programming, and another one, a gal, might be um, designing the uh, con ops and how you're going to actually operate the system. And they're all having to work together and go back and forth and work as a team, which that's what you have to do in the real world, but you don't get a lot of that in school, at least not when I grew up. You didn't get a lot of that in school. Working mm -hmm. together was cheating. And that it's absolutely essential in the real world. So, do you see that kind of thing, um, you know, going on? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I was a mentor to the <coughs> Punahou team, mm -hmm. and I saw where they were and, and suggested that we more explicitly teach in that environment mm -hmm. the concept of systems engineering, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, it gives everyone a chance to draw back, and no matter what specialty they end up within the project, they get an appreciation of the dynamics of the pieces fitting together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I have had a concern that you might get an excellent programmer, but how much of what is he learning out of this whole mm -hmm. program uh, also given to the man that has just invented the chassis? Part. Or the gal. Or just the gal. The chassis. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. so the idea of, of how do we get a, a better blending of growth on the part of everyone mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. aspects mm -hmm. um, and not too soon in the educational process uh, specialize. Right. right. And so uh, the technique that I used was the vocabulary of systems engineering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we had an earlier discussion today uh, just before coming down here on how even in uh, real world, uh, very critical situations, uh, losing track of that makes it, um, you can get results, unexpected results oh, yeah. from what looks like a whole quantity of good intentions. Yeah, it's funny, in my company, I actually report to the systems engineering chief. Oh. So uh, they, even though I'm a scientist, they classify me as a systems engineer, who's just to help stand back and look at the whole problem and say, here's what, your trade space is that you got to work in. You know, this mm -hmm. is, a, you got this power limitation, well, this is how much power you got to actually put out at the end. So, how we get it at the beginning, we got to get to the end of this power. We can't do that job, we have to do it another way, those kinds of things. Yes. So, um, so yeah, the systems engineering is incredibly important. It's not very well emphasized, as far as I can tell in school. Uh, I'm going to see if I had one of, one of the uh, projects came back. This is, somewhat of a systems engineering idea. Here's an individual that was going to design a robot. Mm -hmm. And it just started with, well, what would, what were the many possibilities for this robot that we'd mm -hmm. like it to have, have? What characteristics? And so right. it came up with, I think, the 20 faces. Oh, yeah, the 20 possible missions. Missions. Yeah. And that's a form of first documenting, and this is being done quite well within the robotics community, where mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. look over the test site, um, they mm -hmm. go into great analysis of looking at what capacities the robot has to have and how to tweak them to get the better. The, the point I was trying to make, though, is that they do break themselves into groups and committees. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I think a poster contest like this, and I brought it up with our <coughs> Kimura, that um, uh, that maybe it should be more um, available to have individuals in that larger team have another way to showcase mm -hmm, their particular mm -hmm. talent. I remember who Art Kamira is. Art, Art Kamira, uh, you know, his fish title I don't know, but he's always at all the robotic contests. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, and so and those in the robotics world yeah. know him and realize and respect uh, his his dedication to to making these events 
It's yes, excellent. Uh, such dedicated mentors and leaders mm -hmm. for helping our Keiki. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, we have to take another break. Uh, my name is Mike DeWert. This is Think Tech for the Benefit of Humankind. We've been talking to Phil Blackman about uh, STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And we'll be back shortly. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Olalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Bye. on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. 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 I'm Mike DeWert, Chief Scientist for Think Tech. This is Think Tech, and the show is uh, for the benefit of humankind. Today we're talking with uh, Phil Blackman about uh, Engineers Week and the Engineering Poster Contest he just ran for uh, the, the high schools and middle schools. Are great grade schools too? Uh, sixth grade was the bottom and the uh, 11th was the top. Excellent. So these kids are brilliant. They come with some very nifty things. Uh, I think you have some more examples for us to show. Yes. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't have to be a complicated drawing. But here's one that the judges, when they looked at it, it, it evokes the sense of, wow, I wish I thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> so this particular poster is getting the, wow, I wish I thought of that award. So it's a, it's a power strip that's modular, where you have little mini power strips that plug into each other so that you can string them along. Yes, and if you've ever... I wish I thought of that. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Especially if you've ever hunted underneath your TV, mm -hmm. your stereo, your this and that, and you got all these black cables, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and you have them punched in, and you don't know which one goes to which, you can co color code your cable and match it up with the plug that it goes in. Oh, that's what the colors are for. They're not just decorative. They're actually to help you organize that's your right. outlets. That's very clever. So. This kid's uh, going to be an inventor, maybe get rich. That's right. I, here's, a, here's another kind of poster. Um, this was a, from an art student working to be an architect. <coughs> this contest, in his words, provided a unique challenge combining science and art that is rarely practiced in school. I really enjoyed it. Wow. So a contest of this sort is actually a wonderful data source for mm. the Department of Education yeah. or anyone interested in education. If you right. want to listen to the students, we right. have a hundred posters that the students are commenting about their own experience in the yeah. education So this system. actually looks like a steam-powered flying machine, like maybe yes. a Leonardo da Vinci might have invented with little propellers to drive it forward and little screws to lift it up. Yes. And, uh, and a boiler. It's almost like a steampunk uh, dream machine. Right. Totally impractical, but that really doesn't change its sense of uh, stimulating within the student an adventure. Yeah. You get to talk about thrust and acceleration and uh, the practical physics that you might have to think about if you were to ever be able to actually try to build something like this. That's right. And, and that was part of the discipline of the rules. There, there, it's not hard to get a kid to doodle, but then when you demand that he find a way to use some metric units in his doodle, mm -hmm. uh, that he tells us, how do I characterize it using meters? How do I characterize it in terms of the forces that are acting? Right. And so on this right. diagram is blended in there, probably didn't show up in the TV, but he does have parts of it that are labeled yep. four meters. Yep. He does have these attributes. They not, may not all be making sense, right? but at uh, the seventh grade, this is great to get it started. Absolutely. I mean, he's got a, talking about the thrust, the lift, the torque, mm -hmm. um, all the things you would have to think about. And you'll probably end up doing this with a real system someday, uh, you know, something practical as opposed to a steam-powered flying machine, maybe an electric flying machine based on solar panels or something. Uh, or something. You know? yeah, you or never something. Know. Here, here's another one. I'm going to uh, look at it here, but he's talking about a parachute, and he's taking the classic image of the triangular parachute that Leonardo da Vinci drew, and mm -hmm. we all look at that. And but 
here is a student that knows the rules of the contest and has very clearly come out and said, here's the description, here's the units of measure that I'm going to use to help you understand what you're looking at. He asks rhetorically, what's the use? And then he explains what the purpose is. That's a very uh, helpful thing for an engineer to do. Why, why am I spending my time or your money doing this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the how, the how it works. Because an engineer has to validate that it will deserve this effort. Mm -hmm. And how is he guaranteeing that? And then just some of the particulars, the size, shape, and characteristics. So it becomes almost a marketing tool can I show that one? And yes, you may. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's as, it, it's, as Phil said, it's Leonardo's classic uh, pyramidal para, uh, parachute, but with all the forces drawn in and uh, very, very nicely, nicely done piece of work. Actually, an improvement over Leonardo did, that hadn't drawn some of these vectors and uh, to the ah, same skill. Vectors yeah. weren't invented at the time. He That's had an right. intuitive grasp of them. So. Um, here, here. let's see, if I, uh, is a student that starts out, engineering is fun, I enjoyed figuring out about my topic. You know, if it's going to be fun, they will do better at it. If you can make it fun, the kids will be more interested, more engaged, and the long run do better work. So this is great. Uh, absolutely, and here again is feeling comfortable. There, there's no particular class in math that you're mm -hmm. ever going to be asked to do this. There's there no dynamics of a golf ball. Of a, a, a golf ball, <laughs> you know, and it won't happen in a physics class. And and it and if it was, it might be that everyone has to draw a picture of a golf ball. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. the distinct advantage of running this kind of relationship of uh, a contest is the v great flexibility yeah. and latitude that yeah. the students feel they have ownership of the assignment, and that yeah. makes them much happier. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I went to one of the classes, and when they realized I was sort of the author of the idea to have this kind of contest, and they very attentive, uh, was multiple applauses as we would make some point, and they realized, yes, I got that. I did that. I, I'm, I, I'm glad I did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. It's wonderful. So do you see this going uh, interstate, uh, other states, other cities will start picking up on this idea? Um, I have <laughs> broached that with a, through MIT and a, and a membership organization that I'm a part of because of that. Um, and, and we did a preliminary thought on it. And in some ways, I am, I am glad we held off because we had so many posters to look at here. And we need, but I am, uh, the framework and there's a website that helped illustrate if anybody wants to know, maybe we should let them know that this is a good website to go okay. to. Um, HawaiiCyberspace.com, www.HawaiiCyberspace.com. Yes, and when you get to that main page, uh, there's a very clear place to punch and you will brought, be brought to all the details of the engineering uh, poster contest that has just concluded. Mm, wonderful. And so this was uh, heavily sponsored by the Engineers and Architects of Hawaii, EAH? Um, they elected me to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was one of those, uh, see how far you can go with it. Uh, and that was in mid-December. Mm -hmm. And to mm -hmm. go from mid-December to uh, mid-February and have a completed uh, success of this sort, I think we, we did a good job. Yeah. And that was uh, in significant uh, uh, measure to the courtesy of Hawaii cyberspace. Yeah, excellent. So now engineers and architects of Hawaii, they meet every Friday at the Topa Financial Center for a lecture and lunch. Um, beside from that, I don't know a lot about them. Can you tell me about EAA? It's one of the oldest professional societies for engineer and architects here in Hawaii mm -hmm. going back mm -hmm. to 1902, I believe. Okay. And. Um, that tradition then becomes important. One of our tradition is that we begin on, begin on time and we end on time. So That's very important. That makes it a very pleasant uh, way to make a commitment for it for each of these Fridays. Okay. Plus, we have good food and definitely a topic each week. And what's that, the topic this week? 
got me. Um, I, and in fact, I was hoping that you knew because I got the email and I forgot to. <laughs> so I'll just show up tomorrow and be surprised. That's exactly what so, I'm going to do. Uh, so this is, a, we've got to take another break. So this is Think Tech. Uh, the show is for the benefit of humankind. We're talking with Phil Blackman about uh, engineering and uh, teaching engineering in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Uh, and we'll be back shortly. Aloha. I'm Nicole Horry for Think Tech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone No. 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Horry. Mahalo. Aloha. Uh, my name is Mike DeWert. This is Think Tech. The name of the show is For the Benefit of Humankind. I'm here with Phil Blackman talking about STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And uh, this poster contest you just ran uh, is, is kind of astonishing because these kids have found ways to convey some very refined, complicated, interesting technical ideas and they're only sixth graders or maybe high schoolers. That's right. Um, I really liked the buoyancy one that you uh, that was up there. I don't know if you had you brought that one with you, um, but that's okay. There oh, was... I know which one. I know which one you mean. Um, and again, it shows that if you give latitude to your rules, mm -hmm. <coughs> you don't say that it has to be the scientific method. Mm -hmm. Now, don't mm -hmm. don't blame me for picking on the scientific method, but right. you you. Uh, indicate that the real goal is to communicate right. and in many right. ways to be a, a good marketeer. <clears throat> right. And that you don't only try to design something, you try to sell it. That's, yeah. right. And so the buoyancy one was a clever way of giving uh, a, a person to visualize in a static picture a submarine going down to depth and then coming back up again. I think that's and what you're it talking has to about. do to do that. Yeah. And yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. what is the physics at each stage mm -hmm, that yeah. this happens? Yeah. I've been to many uh, a demonstration um, at the university where they'll make a submarine sink by pushing a plunger and they change the pressure and something's happening, and everybody sort of says, "Well, that looks interesting, but why does it do it? I'm not sure." Here at each stage, the student realized in order to c communicate that successfully, he had mm -hmm. to give a balance diagram ah, yes, at each level. Yes. Right. And, and, and then he chose the idea of just making one little circle going up, down, and back up again. Yeah. Uh, Nope. Yeah, that was that was beautiful, and I like your uh, way you use creativity. You injected creativity into this because people may not appreciate it, but there's a huge amount of creativity that goes into science and engineering. I mean, you have to have the mathematical discipline. You have to understand the laws of nature that you're dealing with. But when you're solving a problem, there's usually way more than one way to solve it, and there's way more than one way to convey what you're trying to solve. And that's where the creativity comes in. Because if you hit a roadblock here, you have to be thinking about how do I get around it? You know, and different, yeah, like I said, very creative. And I like this idea of putting the create, making them, making it clear to the kids that the creativity is inherent in the process. It's not just something you get added on later on for marketing purposes. Very much so. And a part of that was by saying, you can make a fantasy object. You can make a fantasy invention. I don't have it with me, mm -hmm. but the holographic wrist wristwatch. Well, mm. the student was able to show in a picture what he thought that might look like. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. <clears throat> that that stretches their. If they can visualize it, then there's a chance that they can make it. Yeah. And we're only limited. I mean, for example, things that were fantasies, like the Dick Tracy's two-way wrist TV. I remember reading about that in the comics when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. We're practically there now, you know, with the uh, little Apple uh, wrist uh, uh, wrist internet device and other things like that. And then the Google Glass, we've got a heads-up display where you can see all around you, and it automatically translates stop signs for you from foreign languages and stuff like that. And that's just astonishing what we can do now. It used to be complete fantasy. So this fantasy of a holographic Rift TV is uh, probably only 
maybe a couple decades away at most, maybe five years away. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, part of the fun that the students had by the design of the contest again that uh, for the weekend, this past weekend, we had an exhibit of over 100, maybe 200 of these posters at mm -hmm. Pearl Ridge Shopping mm -hmm. Center. Sure, sure. And that yeah, I went by there and saw those, yeah. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. It was a second look after you had a chance. After I graded some of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and we tried something again. Uh, the, the contest rules asked, it said, look, you can talk to your parents. Big deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, which we wanted to encourage. You can talk to a fellow student when you design your poster. Right. Right. You can talk to your teacher. You can go to Google. You can look for anything to help inspire you. It was nice, right. as we showed in that one that was complete, he gave, he gave acknowledgement to some of the research that he did that gave him right. clues. Right. That's a good <coughs> positive uh, yeah. aspect. Yeah. But uh, we didn't find duplication. This is not like a homework assignment where everybody comes back and is competing with the same mm. answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's why the re awards that I'm giving out for this are not based on your first, second, or third. It's what did you capture that made it exciting for us as judges right. and for uh, to to say this is this is this worthy is of a second look. Yeah, and we got to do something to motivate our kids because United States, you, you see all the news we're falling behind in engineering. Mexico graduates more engineers than the United States does now. BMW designed a bobsled for a bobsled team. China built the new bridge to replace the Bay Bridge that collapsed in the earthquake. Why aren't we engineering these things ourselves? You know, and uh, it's we. But we got to motivate people to get into science and engineering more, and uh, if the and and then to communicate what they're doing better. And I think that well, what I think this looks like a very good way to start jumpstart getting the kids involved again, and getting them excited about this kind of endeavor. Um, I, I totally got that feedback by visiting some of the classes where these posters were being generated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and I want to give recognition to a couple of teachers that uh, recently came to the Hawaii school system. Mm -hmm. uh, Denise Spencer, for example, from Virginia, is here now her second year, first or second year. And he, she conducts her class as a STEM class. Mm. That's what happens when you're in her class. Uh, she's coming, though, from nine years' experience as a math teacher. Oh, good. And that makes a marvelous uh, energy to convince the student, show me some numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me a formula. Right. Uh, tell me the techniques, the mathematical techniques that give you courage to say this will work. Yes. And, and, and the poster contest uh, was a delight to their students. They were anxious to... Uh, I'm getting emails. How did we do? You know, and what what's happening with the, the grading? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But the grading is going to be things of this sort. Here, here, for example, we had uh, places for um, the public at Pearl Ridge Shopping Center to come. Okay. And so you got a paper here with comments written on it by the public. And are these in? Was there one for each poster at Pearl Ridge? There, there, there were many, uh, no. There were many po of these cards. So we didn't run out of room. I like this one. Yeah. Somebody wrote, "Engineers rock the world." Engineers rock the world. Yes. So, so, so you're going to give the kids the feedback that you got from the public, as well as from the mentors and the people, the professionals who looked at the. Yes, there's there's some of that, but but that <coughs> actually happens by the nature of how we're uh, um, labeling the awards. You know, it's a. Um, what was some of the others that I had here it was. Uh, Okay. The Engineer Process of Thinking Award, the Concept Marketing Award, the Take It Apart Award. Okay. Take It Apart Award. Yes. I enjoy that, like disassembling. Disassembling, yes. And, mm -hmm. and, and because these were all, uh, the, the students discovered these. They discovered them because of the way we wrote the contest rules. That's great. If we didn't, if we had written them in some other ways, you could guarantee it wouldn't have happened. We might have gotten posters, but it wouldn't have had this kind of endorsement by the public mm -hmm. that we got mm -hmm. out of this. Right. It wouldn't right. have had the endorsement of the students. Right. 
and the joy of the teacher saying, this wasn't hard for me to make happen. That's excellent. I, I yeah. gave, them, gave the assignment, the kids went home, they came back, and the amount of paperwork that the contest required of them was minimal. Great. No, I, I, I'm glad you did this. I'm glad it's going to continue in the future. I, I hope it keeps spreading you know, to other cities and other states. And um, well, with that, though, we are uh, at the end of our hour. So this is, uh, this is Think Tech. I'm Mike DeWert. The show is for the benefit of humankind. We've been talking to Phil Blackman about STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics, and about the poster contest he did for Engineers Week, and uh, amazing, uh, amazing creativity of the kids in Hawaii. So we'll be back next week with another guest, and thank you very much.